everybody. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. We are now in the month of October and we are still on the air. <laughs> Obviously, this is not radio. I'm not sure what to call it. But the Lord is truly blessing us and we are grateful for his continued faithfulness to this endeavor called podcasting. Thanks once again for tuning in for today or tonight's episode. And I want to welcome our new audience in Malawi, Bangladesh, and Italy. Welcome to Full of Life Ministries. We are praying for God to shower down his blessings upon all of our listeners from around the world. And we pray for God's glory to be revealed in the earth. And as always, I'm reminded of a passage of scripture that echoes his love to mankind. And the endurance of God's love is what keeps us on purpose and provides necessary parameters that lets us know his desire for us to excel. Now listen, Psalms 136 verses 1 through 9. Yes, Psalms 136 verses 1 through 9 demonstrates God's echo. You know what an echo is when you hear that echo, 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 echo. <laughs> That was a terrible echo. But nevertheless, an echo is a sound or series of sounds caused by the reflection of sound waves from a surface back to the listener. And I believe that God's echo, his powerful echo is a statement, a spiritual text from God that should reassure us that we serve a God who, as the Bible declares, he's a present help, a very present help in the time of trouble. So listen, people of God, Psalms 136 verses 1 through 9 tells us, Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. God's faithful love or mercy lasts forever and endures forever. Give thanks to the God of all gods. Little G-O-D-S. God's faithful love lasts forever. Give thanks to the Lord of all lords. God's faithful love lasts forever. Give thanks to the only one who makes great wonders. God's faithful love lasts forever. Give thanks to the one who made the skies with skill. God's faithful love lasts forever. Give thanks to the one who shaped the earth on the water. God's faithful love lasts forever. Give thanks to the one who made the great lights. God's faithful love lasts forever. The sun rules the day. God's faithful love lasts forever. The moon and the stars to rule the night. God's faithful love lasts forever. People of God, Mercy describes a quality of God and one that God requires of his people. For mercy or faithful love expresses compassion and love, not just feelings or emotions as expressed in tangible ways. His faithful love is one where while we deal with the real, you know what I'm talking about, the various trials, the, the temptations, hurdles, and uncertainty in this world. We know that unlike human love, which can be distorted or fair-weathered, 
We can rely on his mercy or faithful love to hold us up, (laughs) to keep our focus on our destiny and to help us to stand firm in our faith. And that he who began a good work in you will complete it. We'll complete that work and stay with you by the day of Christ Jesus. Philippians 1 and 6. God created opportunities. He created the skies. Think about it. Just look up right now at the skies. Maybe it's nighttime. So in the daytime, <laughs> look at the beautiful sky that God created. He did this with skill. He created the lights in the sky with a star in which we call the sun. And the sun is designed for warmth. It's created to help in agriculture for all of the vegetation that we consume. Water and sunlight is needed for us to provide nourishment for our bodies. Vitamins, vitamin D from sunlight. All of this was designed by God for us to function in society. And one of the things that I've discovered throughout scripture is there are a lot of moving pieces that God has created for us to live under, but it's for the betterment of our lives. You know, I want to just think about this moment as I'm sharing with you this message that all of the things that we just couldn't understand in our early years, in our youth, sometimes when you get a chance to look through God's word, through the lens of God's eyes, it will help you realize that what he has created, what he has done, the opportunities that he has blessed us with, it was for the betterment of our lives. Even some of the stumbles, even when we fell, even when we came up short, even when we made huge mistakes. (laughs) The scripture says in Romans 8 and 28, it says, for we know. Now, I believe that for we knew through scripture was a, as they call it, a a epiphany where you discovered that, man, where did I miss all of this? And I realized and recognized that in my ignorance, God was still working things out for our good. And so the scripture that says in Romans 8 and 28, it says, for we know, for we have discovered. I like that uh, thought is that we know now because we've discovered that all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are the called according to not our purpose, but to his purpose. Yes, God has created for us things that we can live by, promises that we can hold on to, live within the parameters of God's covering, live within God's law and his principles of truth. It was and it still is for the betterment of our lives. And what the Lord has impressed upon me in the last couple of weeks is, listen, I was at the airport getting ready to fly to visit my brother. Yes, got a chance to see my little brother. I'm the oldest, obviously. And so I got a chance to spend some quality time with him. But before I got to my destination, I noticed at the airport, there was so much (laughs) congestion. And this was, I believe, six o'clock in the morning, believe it or not. But there was so much congestion. There was so much 
um, just finding a park along the curbside just to get to the gate. I mean, people that got, it was crazy. Then you go inside, right? A lot of moving pieces. A lot of requirements for flying. Got to have the proper ID. You have to remove your shoes. <laughs> you have to empty your pockets. Go through a scanner for security reasons just to fly. And all of this has to be done before time to board the plane. Otherwise, you won't be able to fly. You know, operating in a chaotic environment, it appears to me this does not detour anybody to move away from the chaos, to turn from the chaos and go back to safety. No, it does not detour the person who wants to board the plane. The same, it's the same way, people of God. It appears to me that most people that deal with a chaotic environment, their focus increases. They are in concentration mode. <laughs> their levels of focus increases because of the importance of the assignment. You know, you know the reason why? Because you don't want to miss your flight. <laughs> you don't want to be left behind. And you understand if you don't maintain a level of self-control, you will wind up defeated by the chaos. Spiritually so, we too deal with chaotic situations. And the chaos is actually designed by God for us to maintain a level of self-control. And I believe that as you handle the various challenges in life, you will still, and that's the good news, you will still succeed. For in James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4, it tells us, it says, my brothers and sisters, think of the various tests you encounter as occasions for joy. After all, you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let this endurance complete its work so that you may be fully mature, complete, and lacking in nothing. So people have got the various organized tests that we encounter are really occasions, <laughs> promises of joy to define our lives in a way that victory, total victory in Jesus conquers the chaos. It tests our faith in God. Endurance is God's way of handling difficult situations with grace. And we develop into mature, <laughs> complete Christians, lacking in nothing. You know, the enemy likes to bring up things that you don't have. The reality is, is that all of the tests, all of these Moments in life are not to make us bitter, but it's for us to become better. So we really don't lack anything because now joy rules the day. And we begin to see through the, lot, through the lens of joy that joy actually dominates the darkness. It dominates the thought of lack because in actuality, we're not lacking anything in Christ Jesus. We have everything that we need pertaining to life and godliness.
And so today or tonight's episode is one where we will learn through the tests that what we do in the chaos through Christ will last. And so today or tonight's episode is entitled Organized Chaos. I want to say that one more time. Organized Chaos. Let's take a commercial break and we'll be right back with the episode entitled Organized Chaos. Chaos. Hello, hello. My name is Christopher. I'm the editor of Full of Life Ministries San Diego podcast. And first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. But I would also like to say that if you would like any prayer, any words of encouragement, or would just like to reach out in any way, you can email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Also, we have a Twitter account. Our handle is at fulloflifesd. And feel free to reach out. We would love to hear from you. And lastly, I would like to say if you like what you're hearing and would like to donate, you can donate on any one of our pages. If you go to any of our pages, Spotify, Google, Spreaker, any of that, there should be a link that allows you to do so if that interests you. That's all for me. So thank you guys for listening and enjoy the rest of the podcast. All right, we are back. And so let's get into today or tonight's episode entitled Organized Chaos. People of God, in order to develop endurance during the times when the pressures of life begin to blow, we, as children of God, cannot allow anxiousness to overtake our emotions. We cannot allow fear, you know, the acronym of fear, false evidence appearing real to control our outlook. These two tests that live within our world cannot stop us from getting to our destination. We have been chosen. <laughs> we have been chosen by the Lord to make a difference in this world. We've been given an assignment to shine <laughs> in the chaos. So when anxiousness and fear begin to change the direction you're going in, God has given us through his word tools to handle the chaos. Philippians 4 verses 6 through 7 tells us, it says, don't be anxious about anything. Rather, bring up all of your requests to God in your prayers and petitions along with giving thanks. Then the peace of God in the chaos that exceeds all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. You see, anxiousness is when you experience a uneasy feeling of uncertainty your agitation towards a certain circumstance or situation that has you thinking the worst rather than walking confidently in faith. Because you are dreading it because of the fact that things may not turn out in your favor. Have you ever been there before? An anxious moment, an uncertain moment when you feel within yourself that this may not turn out for my good or in my favor. And the reality is we, we live this split life. There's part of us that believe and then the other part is anxious about the situation. And then now fear has you defeated before anything has actually happened. Oh, that is the word that sometimes we, we grapple with. Fear brings this text message that there's no reason to deal with this chaos. And now you're defeated before the actual event has occurred. 
But God says in his word, don't be. Don't be anxious about anything. And the reason he says this is because faith in him is now active. Faith in God is when you use, when you use your spiritual shredder. <laughs> you know that shredding machine that you use to shred your papers? Yes, God has given us this tool called a spiritual shredder. <laughs> so all of your fears, the concerns, your doubts, all of your issues, whether it's a relationship issue or a job issue or a personal issue or just a life issue, his word says, bring all of your requests, all of that baggage, all of that paperwork, bring it to God in your prayers and petitions to God. You see, people of God, the Lord shreds our anxiousness and fears when we take our chaos to the Lord in prayer. When we pull out all of our baggage, all of our files from the past, present and even our future concerns, the Lord shreds away your chaotic life. Because the reality is, endurance is the discovery of knowledge through God. I want to say that one more time. Endurance is the discovery of knowledge through God. So discovering what it makes you excel in life is when you discover what you have at your disposal. God is the God of discovery. Yes, he is. He says, bring your request and petitions to God along. This is a, a key part of this verse. Along with giving thanks. You see, thanking God for the lessons you've learned from the chaos and realizing when you try to handle your chaos on your own abilities and your own intellect. When you realize that you cannot handle this on your own, this is when things, when you try to do things on your own, this is when things that God has set up in an organized way become disorganized is because you try to work things out in your own strength. But when you understand this, the solution to your chaos, when you understand the secret to your chaos, when you understand the answer to your chaos, which is Christ, God's peace <laughs> keeps you on assignment. His peace lifts the chaos from your purpose and moves you closer to that safe place in God that provides knowledge of handling the various trials that all of us face daily. And so in closing, people of God, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 tells us, this is God speaking, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace. to give you a future filled with hope. Chaos in layman's terms are potentially disastrous moments that threaten our purpose. And its objective is to create anxiousness and fear that keeps you stagnated or moving in the right direction. But I'm here to let you know, people of God, everyone who's listening to this episode under the sound of my voice to hold on to God's plans for your life. Understand that the chaos is not designed to hold you back from his promise, but to encourage you to trust him in the chaos. 
Your future is filled with hope. <laughs> He's the greatest shredder of anxiousness and fear and anything, and I mean anything that tries to make you stumble and fall. It's time to give Christ your burdens and let God rule your life forever. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all of your many blessings. We thank you for the lessons that you continue to teach us day in and day out. You shine your light upon our hearts and our minds to reveal the plans that you have in store for us. And even though the various trials tries to derail us from the purpose that you created in us, Lord God, help us to lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you because you have the plans. You have the solution for us to live and to move and to have our very being through you, oh God. So Lord God, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice that they will receive this message entitled, Organized Chaos. Lord God, you control it all. You see over the chaos and you understand that there is no weapon that's formed against us will prosper as long as we remain in you that we will trust you and not our own intellect, that we will always go to you for the solutions to life. Help us to stay focused, focus, Lord, on what you have in store for us, oh God. Bless your people, minister to your people. Oh God, take away those things that are a distraction to your people, oh God. God, clear the minds of those who are anxious and fearful about their present situation and their future situation. Lord God, let them not be held to things that happened in the past, but they will always trust you because you have already forgiven them of all of the sins that they've committed. So God, help us to be free in you to move towards the chaos, knowing that you have given us this moment to receive your joy. This occasion that you've set up before the beginning of time, it was for us to thrive. It was for us to succeed. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for what you're going to do for your people. And we ask all these blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, people of God, that is it for today or tonight. The episode entitled Organized Chaos. This is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. I hope and pray that you really did receive something from the Lord through this episode entitled Organized Chaos. Please continue to share these podcasts with your friends, your family, your co-workers, your church family, whoever it may be. Please pray for us as we pray for you. We love you with the love of Christ. Please, if there's anything that we can do to help you along your Christian journey, don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to email us at fulloflifesd at gmail.com. Once again, fulloflifesd at gmail.com. We love you. We pray for you. Continue to pray for us. And let's continue to do this in Jesus' name. God bless.